Hello and welcome into this edition of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Minutecast. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all platforms. My name is Dan Holney. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. And once again, thank you for joining me today. In this episode, we are going to talk about Tom Brady restructuring his deal. Yes, once again, he restructured his deal, and it appears that he's doing that to bring back his old friend, Rob Gronkowski. We'll talk about that in this episode. We will then talk about Rob Gronkowski. What are his plans with the Buccaneers? Is he going to return to football for one? And if he does return, is he coming back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? We'll talk about that. And then also Nadamakan Sue and draft picks that are coming up all in this episode. But to start off, what does the Buccaneers restructure of Tom Brady's contract mean? The Buccaneers restructured the contract of quarterback Tom Brady Friday as he potentially enters his final year in a Bucs uniform. The move to restructure his contract has been on the table for some time this offseason. Tampa Bay now adds an additional $9 million to their salary cap for 2022. The move was first reported by ESPN's Adam Schefter, and it appears to me that that's what is going on here. You know, one of the things that you can say about Tom Brady is, is that he's a great quarterback. But one of the other things that you can say about him is that he's flexible and he can see down the field a little bit, not just the football field, but just how things work in football. He understands that he could demand the King's ransom and he could get it on any team in the NFL. But what he knows is that if he takes all the money and signs a huge deal, that means there's not a lot of money for the rest of the players on the team. In this case, most notably, Nadama Kansu and Rob Gronkowski. And I think, you know, Tom Brady's probably thinking to himself, I got seven rings, you know, and I'm on pretty much my last year deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Why not make a real solid push for the for the Super Bowl? And he's going to do that if he has players around him that are going to help him win. And in this case, you know, it goes back to people he knows and trusts in the form of Rob Gronkowski. Let's face it, the Buccaneers have lost some bigger pieces in the offseason. So he wants to keep those familiar faces that he knows, those guys that can catch the football and the guys that can protect him out there. So uh, in the story here, Adam Schefter says, Tom Brady and the Buccaneers restructured his 2022 contract today, creating over $9 million of added salary cap space for Tampa Bay as it gets ready to head into next week's draft. League sources tell ESPN Brady still is scheduled to be a free agent after this season. And kind of what it is, is they just kind of kick the can down the road a little bit, as they say, um, just so that it can create more cap space. In this case, $9 million. $9 million definitely is a lot of money to free up um, for the possibility of having uh, Rob Gronkowski and um, Nadamakan Sue coming back. Uh, This is an article in SB Nation here. The big question uh, marks remain around the potential re-signings of defensemen and linemen Nadama Kansu and tight end Rob Gronkowski. It does not appear like there is much movement from either side to sign a deal to return to Tampa Bay or back to football period. So for now, bringing either of those two back will remain a mystery for the time being. And I think, and I think, you know, everyone around uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the fan base, Bucks Nation, they know that Rob Gronkowski is going to come back. He's just going to. That is his right hand man. And I mean, I would be very surprised if um, if Rob Gronkowski didn't return. I guess Nadamakan Sue is a bit more of a question mark, but. Again, I would be surprised if he didn't come back either. I mean, it's really hard not to want to come back to a team that you're playing for with Tom Brady. So I think that, you know, it's just going to take some time and there's some things that need to get worked through. But I think that ultimately he will sign that deal. Um, This does, of course, allow for some breathing room, like they say in there. So we'll just have to see. Um, But, you know, I think that all signs point to uh, him coming back. Like I say, I would be very surprised if you don't see Rob Gronkowski come, comes back because I mean, let's face it. I mean, if he only has one more year left to play in the NFL, I mean, there's a chance, you know, I mean, let's face it. I mean, he could, you know, there's been uh, speculation and rumors that he might want to go up to new England for one more season or that he's going to want to play for the 49ers. There's so many questions that need to be answered out there. So I guess that no one really knows for sure 
With all the uncertainty that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers faced during the summer when Tom Brady declared his retirement, the majority of that is gone. Now that Brady is set to return for the gray and red this season, the next question for Tampa Bay will be if Rob Gronkowski will return to play alongside his uh, former friend and longtime friend Tom Brady and Gronkowski have been teammates for 11 seasons and neither have given a firm statement on whether or not a decision will be made. Um, but like I say, it's a matter of time. Rob, excuse me, Tom Brady said this about Gronk's returning to Tampa Bay next year in a recent interview. I'm hoping Gronk comes back to play despite the fact that Gronkowski has yet to decide whether or not he will return to football report reports claim that he does. He has simply stated that he will play for the Buccaneers. So what it sounds like in that is that, you know, if he does come back, he is going to play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I mean, all cards on the table, if Tom Brady did not come back, there's no, I'm, I'm almost a hundred percent sure that Rob Gronkowski would not have come back to football. I think that, you know, money is a motivator for anyone, but I think that ultimately what is motivating Rob Gronkowski is to, to another chance to play with his longtime friend and teammate, Tom Brady, so they can go chase after that Super Bowl uh, one more time, um, at least one more time. But that that's what it appears as of right now. The other question marks are Nadama Kansu. We hope to get him back. Contract talks between Gronkowski and Tampa Bay have yet to begin, but they will once he makes his decision. That will start if I decide that I want to play, Gronkowski told Emery in an interview before an appearance on Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards on April 9th. There's no reason to do that while there's still a decision to be made first. It's all about if I decide to. And that is Rob Gronkowski just kind of telling the whole world that, you know, slow your roll. This is my decision to make. This is not your decision to make. And when I'm ready to make that decision, I'm going to do it. With the NFL draft starting in a week, Tampa Bay will have to make some um, fascinating uh, decisions unless they can get Gronkowski on board. Tom Brady will most likely have to find another tight end to throw to, and it will most likely be someone drafted by the Buccaneers. And that, you know, that's always the uncertainty when you draft someone because, you know, how players play uh, in college is not necessarily how they play in the NFL. Uh, we've seen that all along. See O.J. Howard, for example. I mean, he's the first one that comes to mind. Just guys that don't live up to their uh, potential. I guess in that same breath, you could also put Jameis Winston, um, a guy that uh, never quite lived up to his potential, who's you know going to be playing next year uh, for the New England, uh, or excuse me, the New Orleans um, Saints. So there's just a lot of questions that about uh, abound. Jason Light, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers general manager, claims that Brady has little to no say in the path the Buccaneers take in the draft. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think that that only makes sense, doesn't it? Because if Brady only has one more year left, it's not like those players are going to have that big of an impact this season. I mean, they might. I mean, if they go and make a splash and sign someone that they deem is ready to play right away. But I don't think that they're going to leave that up to Tom Brady. I mean, I think that's a safe assumption. I think that Brady has some role on who's going to be playing on the team next year, uh, you know, as far as starters and everything that is concerned. But I don't think that they're going to, you know, seek Tom Brady's input that much on that. Um, so, I mean, it's just, it's an interesting time. Um, everyone's happy that Tom Brady decided to come back, but there's still a lot of question marks, a lot of open holes on this team. Who's going to be playing where, what, why, when? Um, like I say, you know, you definitely want a guy like Rob Gronkowski back. Um, those guys are, a, you know, you, they're a four leaf clover. You don't find them everywhere. A big frame, a guy that can catch a football and run it, a big, albeit he is a lumbering body going down the field. Um, it's always great to have Rob Gronkowski on your side. All right, after the break here, we are going to continue to talk about Rob Gronkowski and where does he fit in. And then later in the show, we are going to talk about Nadama Kansu and the upcoming draft. We'll talk about all of those stories next. All right, welcome back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Minicast. I'm so glad you guys decided to join me today. This is the offseason. There's not as much news, so there is not as many of these podcasts going on. Um, but it's just, you know, I want to keep you guys updated in the off season. There'll be more of these podcasts as we get into OTAs and we get towards the, the fall, which I know we're only in April and I'm getting way ahead of myself, but I mean, it, it's going to happen sooner than, you know, it's just, that's the way life is. The older you get, time goes quicker, quicker and quicker. Once again, my name is Dan Homie. I am also the host 
of Locked On Capitals. If there's any uh, NHL fans, I also host the Washington Nationals Minute Cast, and I want to thank you for joining me on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Minute Cast today. So, to continue the talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and all the question marks that loom out there, you know, with Rob Gronkowski and then the Domicon Sue. Um, that is another big question out there. Um, and he, I think that it's in their best interest to to try to bring him back. Uh, the Pewter Report writes, even if the Bucks re-sign Adamakon Sue and Steve McClendon in free agency, the team still needs to draft a defensive tackle. Sue is 35 and McClendon is 36, and 2022 could very well be their last year in the league. Tampa Bay general manager Jason Light would be wise to add a young starting caliber tackle to the team with nose tackle Vita Vea as soon as possible. Light signed uh, Vea, the team's first round pick in 2018 at to contract extension through 2026 worth $17.75 million per season. Vea is coming off a career year with four sacks, four tackles for loss, 12 quarterback hits, three pass breakups, and a fumble recovery. So, I mean, they want to keep those guys out there, uh, you know, from the Super Bowl season. I mean, honestly, Sue has signed three one-year deals with the Bucks. The last two contracts were worth $9 million per season. Sue is still very capable of a run, de- run defender and has notched six sacks in each of the last two years. He also had 1.5 sacks in Tampa Bay Super Bowl. Um, win over Kansas City in 2020. The problem is that there are no Sues in this year's draft class. The talent at defensive tackle this year is pretty weak, just like last year's was, where we all have great defensive tackles in college football. Where have all the great defensive tackles gone? And, uh, you know, that's, you know, if you're in football right now and you're in high school or in college, and if you have that kind of skill set, you can see that there is a lot of opportunity out there. So, by all means, if you could do that, that would be in your best interests. There are a lot of different theories to that. One of them is that these big, long, athletic guys become offensive tackles, Light said. You're seeing a little bit of stunt of growth in that position over the last couple of years. I'm hoping that reverses here in the next few years. This year's draft features three or four quality interior defensive linemen, but the quality and quantity drops off quickly. Georgia's Jordan Davis could be the first tackle drafted in the first round, but he's primarily a space-eating nose tackle with very little pass rush ability. Davis will be likely be off the board by the time Tampa Bay picks at 27, but the Bucs already have that type of player and a better one in Vita Vea, a pro bowler. Uh, they wouldn't select Davis anyway. Davis's teammate, Devontae Wyatt, is a quick, twitchy, athletic defensive tackle, but he's already 24, has some character concerns from his past, and only has had five career sacks, including 2.5 last year. There's a chance he could be gone at by number 27, but the Bucks did bring him in for a top 30 visit. Is there a defenseman, a defensive lineman like that out there that's better? And I don't think so. Uh, so it could be Houston's Logan Hall. He's six foot six, two hundred and eighty-three pounds, and looks like Will Golston wearing that number ninety-two jersey for the Cougars. Hall's stock is on the rise, and he's considered a second rounder with an outside shot at late first round, according to Ian Rappaport. So there's a lot of there's a lot of good players, Jason Light says. You hear about them a lot in the media, and there's a reason why they are good football players. They are at a premium position, uh, and we had good visits with them. So, you know, just kind of what we're talking about in this article here in the Pewter Report is that there is not a lot of depth or there's not a lot of opportunity in the draft to pick up someone that's going to fill the spot of Nadamakan Su unless you go and sign someone, you know, from another team. But then, I mean you don't really know what you're getting in that position either or in that player rather. So I think it would be in their best interest if they can move around some money to find a way to sign the Damakansu. I mean, I know that it is. All right. So after the break here, we are going to talk about just some game notes, uh, some uh, notes from uh, different beat writers around the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And we'll talk about those notes after the break. All right, welcome back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Minicast. I'm so glad you decided to stick with me here. My name is Dan Holmey. I host Locked On Capitals. I also host the Washington Nationals Minicast. This 
is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Minicast. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. And uh, Greg Amon was writing on Twitter. He had some insight on Tom Brady and uh, Nadamakan Sue and different things like that. He said, if Tom Brady simply retires after this season, the Bucks can shift some of his significant dead money to the 2024 cap. If you were to sign with another team, Bucks could have as much as $33 million in dead money counting for Brady in 2023. So that is staggering to me if that is the case. If Gronk and Sue will take some deals, the new contracts count for $6.2 million against this year's cap and ten point eight in dead money next year. Bucks are already way over the 2023 cap, so it's far from ideal, but it would get them back to the team uh, close to chasing the ring again. And I think that that's what they ultimately want to do. And I think they probably went to Tom Brady since he is taking a lot of the Buccaneers money and saying, hey, man, could you push some of this money down a little bit so we can keep some of these players so we can contend uh, for a Super Bowl again? So like I've talked about in this episode, that would only make sense. Uh, it would help the Bucks from a cap standpoint if they can bring Brady back for another year in 2023 and extend him before the league year ends in March. That would avoid all the dead money from voidable years, $30 million plus counting against the 2023 salary cap. And, you know, I mean, that's getting um, Tom Brady into being pretty late. And, you know, Father Time is undefeated. And I know that uh, Tom Brady is the GOAT. But, you know, what kind of player is he going to be two years from now? I know that there's going to be a drop-off sooner or later. I cover the Washington Capitals, and they talk about that with Alex Ovechkin. You know, he's had nine 50-goal seasons, and it doesn't seem to be dropping off for him. He's only 36, however. But in this case, they're kind of both goats in their respective leagues. You know, you just got to know that there's going to be a drop-off at some point. How much cap space do the Bucks need to sign Rob Gronkowski and Adama Kansu? Last year, those two made $17 million, but they took up only $6.2 million in 2021 cap space because the Bucks used voidable years to shift $10.8 million to this year. In theory, Bucks could do the same now. So for the two of them playing in 21-22, the cap hit works like this. In the 21 season, 6.2. The 2022 season, 17 million. In the 2023 seven, excuse me, 2023 season, 10.8 million. Like all cap deferments, it's basically an interest-free loan to borrow from future cap space. And you think that that's a loophole that the NFL will eventually close off because. You know, there's supposed to be a cap space that you're supposed to work under. But when you kind of work the system and just push money out like that, it just seems like uh, a loophole, like I said, that will get closed at some point. It's possible the Bucks wait with Sue to see if they can land a top d- defensive lineman in the first round, which would make his return less vital if to the team's 2022 success. Can't tell if they're playing hardball like that or just maybe using that for leverage to get him to sign for less and I mean, I don't really think that you can do that with him. I think that Sue is, you know, he's still a viable commodity. And, you know, if you jerk him around, he's just going to either retire. I mean, the guy's got a ton of money or he's going to play for another NFL team. So I think that it's advantageous for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to do the right thing and sign him to his deal. Pay the man his money, for God's sake. All right. This has been the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Minicast. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Again, this is the off season, so these podcasts are a little bit far and few in between, but I will uh, have a podcast anytime news breaks like this, and as we head to OTAs in the regular season, it will be at least one podcast a week, maybe two. Um, I'm doing the Locked On Capitals podcast five nights a week, so that takes up quite a bit of my time. But in any case, I want to thank you again for joining me today. I'll talk to you guys again next time. Thank you for listening.